Hi, and welcome back to The Lisa Nichols Show, where we have delicious, dynamic, courageous conversations about the things that make us better men, better women, better change agents. I love reading your comments. I love when you reply to something that I've said. I love when you begin to exchange and engage and share with others how this is similar in your life or what did it cause you to think about or even do. Here, we constantly share with each other so we can keep growing. Now, if you're new, then we use the, the phrase B-O-L, that's breakthrough out loud, which means, oh my God, I didn't know that. Or Yana, Y-A-N-A, you are not alone. Now, today we're doing something a little different on my show, actually a lot different. I have some of my favorite people here with me because actually, and we're behind the scenes, we've been shooting for the last two days. We've shot a ton of videos for many different wonderful causes. And inside that conversation, we were talking about our kids and questions came up and my team, my beautiful team said, we got to share this. You, this needs to be a show. So this wasn't planned to be a show. This wasn't the agenda. This is my after work clothes. I was ready to just kick it and chill and be busy doing nothing. But man, I love this conversation. And so let's just jump right on in. You're going to hear them. They came to shoot and get, be behind the cameras. And next thing you know, as parents, we're in front of the cameras. So if you're a parent, uh, a parent of a newborn, if you're pregnant, if you have children who are preteens or teens, um, you might get some value from this. So tune in. So let's get started. Let's just, let's just jump in and see where this goes. Cause I know it got juicy for us early. So you, Lisa, you've been parenting for a very long time and always behind the scenes. I'm always hearing you you know, saying, oh, Johnny, when he was 10 or 7, this is what happened. So um, some question that I have is, how do you discipline a child without having to raise your voice? I have a one-year-old, so I want to know in the future, as she starts to get older, mm -hmm. that I want to be able to discipline her, but I don't want to have to raise my voice at her all the time. Okay, okay, that's good. So um, I have a 10 year old son and uh, he's actually here during the production day. So it's been awesome to see you interact with him and um, how he attentively listens to you when you correct him and his behavior. And not that it's bad or anything, um, but you know, I could throw all kinds of labels at him. He's full on ADHD, you know, lack of impulse control, all these things. And if I want to have him do something or give him directions, I have to repeat myself numerous times. How do you avoid getting frustrated with your child when you have to repeat yourself over and over? That's a great question. Um, I got three kids, 10 year old, eight and three. And I wanted to ask, my, my question is, how do you uh, spend time with your child when you're scheduled irregular? Mm, good stuff, good stuff. I love it, real parenting things. So one, 10, ten, ten eight, eight and three, right? You come all the gamuts, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so let's jump in. And I think um, throughout this coaching, we all could use all of it, right? Which is why I said, let's just throw all the questions in the bucket and we'll swirl it around and have a delicious dynamic conversation. So I want to start by saying I'm not the perfect parent, you know, um, but um, my son and I achieved what I would want to achieve as a parent, which is now that he's an adult, he chooses me as a friend and as a good friend and as a safe space. So um, number one, begin with the end in mind. Not that he's at his end, but as an adult, it's the end of an error of parenting. Oftentimes I have my students who have uh, uh, children between the age of 16 and 20, I have them conduct a graduation for themselves. Mm -hmm. I recently had um, uh, a students, Julio and Nancy Garcia. I love, I love you guys. They actually, I, I gave them the homework and because they're super achievers, they graduated themselves with their two uh, adult children with cap and gowns and a round table discussion of the graduation. And so one, it's important to understand when you graduate yourself, what do you want to have in place? Begin with the end in mind because that's going to guide the way you engage. I believe that parents of adult children who don't speak to them anymore or who have strained relationships 
or, or it's just difficult. And you may know some of this by people, you know, or you may have experienced some, the parents didn't have the end in mind. They thought I'm always your mother. Well, that's true, but I'm also in choice now. Right. And so, um, begin with the end in mind. What do you want her? What do you want him to say about how you engage with them? Allow that because that's not going to guide you so much when things are going great. That's going to guide you when they frustrate you. <laughs> right. That'll guide that part. So number one, begin with the end in mind. And number two, when you are course correcting a behavior, so what you're doing is course correcting a behavior. Um, always know that you're not choosing to reprimand a child just to reprimand the child. I said a little bit of this earlier to you, but I'll say it again because our friends are joining us. You're reprimanding or you're course correcting a behavior because the behavior was incorrect. The behavior came from a choice. The best gift you can give your child is to let them know the power of choice. Because that's going to, that's going to one, keep them in line to understand my choices produce results, but that's going to also let them know they got the freedom of choice. And so they won't become a victim to life. Like someone's choosing life for me. No, I choose my life. But before that I choose to clean my room. And when I clean my room, life goes great. When I don't clean my room, I don't get to do all the things. So it's not that my son never thought he was on a punishment because I put him on a punishment. He began to tell his friends. When his friend said, why can't you go to the dance? You know, he's 15 or 16. Why can't you go to the dance? He goes, cause my choices, I, I didn't choose to do my homework. And so my choices landed me at home on a Saturday night. And I would love to hear him say that because I wasn't the culprit. I wasn't the bad guy. Your choices. If you want some different results, make different choices. And so, um, really getting your daughter early on engage with her choices. When you say one plus one equals two, what's the one in their behavior and what's the other one in their behavior and what's the two in the result? It's the same exact way. If they can learn A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, they can learn my choice, my results. That's a beautiful thing because then they'll never blame the system. They'll never blame the man. They won't be a victim to their life and you won't be the bad guy in the house. Okay. Does that make sense, Kelsey? And Johnny, um, I, I love having your son here. I love having him here. And, and I know you worry mm -hmm. some, you worry because of the labels that, that are in some behavioral, um, uh, management that he, based on just some things that he's been dealing with, that he was born with. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, so recognizing that there's a label, but not living under the label, right. And not ignoring the label, not ignoring the need that comes with that experience. Right. And so what I find with, um, with children who have, um, and Jelani was this way, Jelani had, he was just very hyper. They tried to diagnose him as ADHD. They, they attempted to tell me to put him on Ritalin. That didn't go well, you know, cause I felt like I'm not dismissing Ritalin and medication for someone who needs it. I didn't choose it for my child because I thought that it would medicate his creativity. But when I made that choice, I knew that I was going to have zoom, 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 road runner all over the place. Right. And, um, and so there were some things that I needed to learn how to do. And one was to create structure and to rinse and repeat. He needs routines. He needs constant, consistent routines because that'll be become his bumper rail. All children need routines, but when a child is dealing with either feeling invisible or feeling unloved or behavior management, any of those things outside of just a regular growing up child, then routines and rituals are their safety blanket, right? It's also some of your reprieve because now you can point to the routine, not to your voice all the time, right? So seeing it that he needs to hear it, he needs to see it. And if you really want to drill it down, let him co-create it, right? People, adult and children support what they help to create, right? So create the chore list, right? You saw him taking out the trash or replacing the trash bag, right? I went into him and what you didn't see is I said, what do you do at home? That's really helpful as my father was pulling up the trash bag. He goes, he goes, I do that. I said, great. Can you do that here? 
He goes, yeah, I know how. Right. And he was excited. And so finding those things that he does, um, and having great celebration around them. So we're all like three-year-olds. What's celebrated gets repeated. Don't ever stop that. Right. Don't ever stop that. That's why he engages with me so well, because I'm always celebrating what he does well. And he even said his own self, he has a perfect record at my house. <laughs> so cute. He says he has a perfect record at my house. Because I'm always, and he only knows that because he sees I'm always celebrating him, right? And so set some structure in place, allow him to co create, allow them to co create the structure, allow them to be in choice about how they fulfill it when they choose to not fulfill it, have a result. The result has to be some form of takeaway, some form of stop. And it has to be attached to the choice. And then I would ask Jelani, what did you choose to do that got you here? So that we remember, cause we quickly forget conversations disappear, right? So rinse and repeat the conversation. What did you do that had you not be able to have television? Oh, I chose to, and I'm always using the word choice. And that result ended in what? So I do a lot of fill in the blanks. A lot of parents lecture and they lecture, they, they complete the entire sentence. I don't, I have you fill in the blanks <laughs> to make sure you got it. So what was the choice? I didn't wash the dishes. And what was the result? I can't wash television. Great. Now we know. Right. So, and the key thing is to do it in the same tone because when you yell, that all they hear is the yelling you actually have less of an impact because you now added another ingredient into the situation. So if you really want them to see the power of their choice and the power of the result, don't yell, just talk about it. Remember, it's like you're, you're the law, right? I said this earlier, you're the law. You never have a police officer come up to you and go, why were you speeding? The reason why they don't yell is because they know the ticket's going to yell. They go, oh, so you're in a hurry, huh? Well, <laughs> rush on to the court and pay this $500 ticket. And you are, you, they don't have to yell because this ticket said everything. You're the law of your home. Don't yell. I, I shared with you off camera before we turned the cameras on that a friend of mine, I've had some great teaching and it hurt, it stung. But a, a great friend of mine said that, um, no, no offense, I'm not speaking bad about any parents. This is what was said to me, but that, uh, ignorant parents yell and curse and, and whip their kids. And I had been spanking Jelani up until that point. I just want you to know <laughs> I had been spanking. I, I was raised getting a spanking or as we would call it a beating. And so I, I would spank Jelani as well. And when I heard this, it changed everything for me. He said, parents, ignorant parents yell, curse and spank. And I said, why? He goes, cause they've run out of words. So now they use curse words. They've run out of words. So now they yell the same words. They've run out of words, so now they hit. If you operate, I changed everything for me. It changed everything for me. I thought, well, I'm not ignorant. And, and I could tell you, I guided Jelani. He's not a perfect kid. I'm not a perfect parent, but we had a really good dance together. And he's a really good person. And I guided him through conversations and choices and results. And I just made sure I was consistent on the results. John, to your question. How do you find time for kids while you're building your dream? I think I've been asked this question the most because I have so many entrepreneurs on my campus, so many beautiful people who have great things to give to the world. Uh, are they a part of a great company and they, they love what they do, right? And yet they, they're torn between these two loves, right? I love what I do and I love my child. How do I feel? Um, so I'm going to invite you to do something I did. I started doing this when Jelani was, I think he was eight and it changed everything. And that was, I blocked out times of the day. That was his time. Now in the morning, the time of the day that was his was when I prepped him for school. And that was our time in the evening. Our time, I called it bonding with the chef and we would cook dinner. Uh, and as he got older, I made the time a little later and it was right before he went to bed and I gave him that time and I made it a time that I can pull out of my day and still get everything done that I needed to get done. You don't need 24 hours to get everything done that you need to get done. You're not working 24 hours. If so, we need to create a better working system because that's not working. Right. And so I gave Jelani 90 minutes a day. 
the average parent in 2007 spent 12 minutes a day with their child. And they spent the majority of that time dictating, not listening. So I made a commitment. I was going to beat 12 minutes. <laughs> like I'm going to do better than 12. And I made a bigger commitment that I would spend that time in a dialogue, not a monologue. Right. And so that's what started this process. I read this study back in 2006 or seven, and I was like, Whoa, that's not cool. I don't want to be that parent. Right. And so 90 minutes a day. I begin, I cut it down. It ended up being for maybe six years before he left the house, before he left uh, for college, 45 minutes because his needs changed. Let me tell you the power of those 90 minutes. So it's 90 minutes and you give it to all your kids at the same time, right? You give it to all your kids. It's just time zone. During that time, I got down on his level. So he was little at the time. He was like eight or nine. Um, I went into his room. I got on the floor. I was younger then, getting up wasn't as hard, <laughs> amen. I, I got to his level. He always, always, always wanted to play Monopoly. He's not gonna watch this, I don't think. I hate Monopoly. I've always hated Monopoly <laughs> because it doesn't end. <laughs> but what would end would be the 90 minutes and we would put a towel over the Monopoly and resume it the next day. Jelani got used to those 90 minutes. So he didn't feel as if I wasn't spending time with him before. He looked forward to the 90 minutes. He would be waiting at, like waiting at my office door for the 90 minutes. So I, I didn't violate the 90 minutes either. So I didn't ever have a project that was more important and superseded the 90 minutes. Those were his 90 minutes. People don't ask me to do a project that would take away my sleep. They don't say, I'm sorry, don't sleep for the next three days because I need you to do this project. So this was like my sleep. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that gave him security. Can I tell you, I was on the road 200 days at that time, 200. And I saw all this come to fruition and how just this block of time, if it's 60 minutes, Kelsey, let it be 60 minutes. If it's 45 minutes, let it be 45 minutes, but be committed to the time and allow him to see the time. So I had a clock a digital clock and a circular clock. I had both clocks in his room so he could understand what the time was. Sometimes I stayed in 10 minutes later, but he was free when I left. He's like, okay, we're, we're after time. Mommy go. He didn't have to fight for that time. He knew it rituals and routines around the time. It all came back to bless me. When he turned 15, there was an interview. And this interviewer asked a dirty question. You guys have heard about it. He said, Lisa, you're on the road over 266 days. At the time it was 266 days. Jelani's 15 now. He said, and he looked at Jelani. Jelani was in the interview with me. And he said, Jelani, how has that hurt? How does that hurt you? Mm -hmm. Dirty question. But because we had that allocated time, Jelani put his arm around me, face full of braces, 15 years old, so not politically correct or even know about political correctness at the time. So it wasn't like he was going to try to manufacture an answer. He said, though my mom spends 66% of her time on the road, the 34% of the time that she's at home feels better than most parents who are at home 100% of the time. I sat back and I was like, whoo, oh my God, I just broke into tears. It was the allocated time consistently. It'll modify over time. But I remember when Jelani told me, mom, I'm good. I don't need any more time. When I asked him at 18, Jelani, what could I have done better as a parent? Tell me what you, what, what, what could have done? What could have happened differently? The first thing he said was, you always let me know that I was your priority. I never wondered if anything was more important than me. I said, how did that come about? He said, you gave me my time. Now, when I was away, he didn't have time. But when I came back, I got right back into our schedule. And so I invite you to create that time with them. And during that time, whether you're playing Connect Four or Operation or Jax, um, something that builds motor skills, something that's engaging, non-electronic, something that, or unless, unless that's their thing, you do it with them. But something that's their thing on 
something that's their thing on their time. And so I want to end with this and we can always have the parent conversation so much. There's so much to learn. I would always tell Jelani on every birthday, Kelsey, I'd say happy 10th birthday. Now remember it's mommy's first time parenting a 10 year old. Happy 13th birthday, Jelani. Now remember, it's mommy's first time parenting a 13 year old. Happy 17th birthday, Jelani. Now remember, it's mommy's first time parenting a 17 year old. So I want you to remember that you're learning. You've never done this before. When Jelani was 18, I said or did something stupid. I don't know which one. I just, it was something dumb. And I looked at Jelani and I said, I apologize. I so apologize. Mommy just made a poor judgment. And he looked at me and goes, it's okay, mom. It's your first time parenting an 18 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Allow yourself to be a student learning learner while still being the leader of your household. You have little mini humans. They're no less brilliant than us. They're just brilliant in different ways. And give them permission to dream because they watched you dream. Give them permission to fly because you took the leap. But most importantly, give them permission to get up because they watched you fail and do the same. Mm -hmm. That's the best gift you can give them is the gift of the safety to fail and still win.